Hello and thanks for joining me. So you want to know what our best sewing machines for free machine embroidery are. Luckily for you, I have that knowledge and I'm willing to share. I'm Anna and I work here at the sewing studio. I say here, this is just our fab studio where we do lots of different videos and tutorials for you. Downstairs is our shop where I work most of the time, but don't tell them, I'm taking a break so that I can come here and give you this information. So, let's crack on. In third place is the Janome J320. In second place is the Janome HD9. And in first place, drum roll please, the Benina 335. Now all these machines are capable of sewing lots of different projects, but in our opinion, they are the best ones to do free machine embroidery. And what they all have in common is they all have the ability to disengage the feed dogs and they are all a bottom slash front loading bobbin. Now, that makes life easier because if you want to do some experimental work with some decorative stitches, you can change the tension on that bobbin. So you might want to do a whip stitch or a feather stitch or a cable stitch. It just makes life easier. If you're going to do a lot of that, my advice would be to buy a second bobbin and then you've got one for all your experimental work and one for everything else. Also with that, if your bobbin runs if your bobbin runs out while you're midway through, you can quite easily take it out from the bottom, reload, and then you haven't had to move your work anywhere else. I'm gonna talk you through each one individually, and we'll start with the J320. The J320 is a great little machine. Not only is it good for free machine embroidery, it's also really good on lots of different projects. You've got 20 different stitches down here. Uh, importantly for your free machining, it has a straight stitch and it has a zigzag stitch. So if you're somebody that likes to thread paint using a zigzag, then it has that ability. You've got your stitch length alteration here and this is how you select your stitches. It has a built-in needle threader to help you thread the eye of the needle. As I say, it's bottom loading bobbin, that's just in there, and this is also where you would drop the feed dogs. It comes with a few feet and some accessories. Now, none of these feet are suitable for doing free motion work, so you will need to buy that separately. There's two different options. There's a darning foot, which is a hopper type one, and there's a convertible free motion set. That one is static, but it has interchangeable soles. I'm gonna demonstrate this one for you today. So we'll get the machine plugged in and I'll show you how easy it is to set up. The Convertible free motion foot comes with uh, what's called a closed toe sole on it. It also has an interchangeable open toe. And then this plastic one, which has your wide hole for zigzag. And it also has these target shapes for if you want to do any echo quilting. The pack also comes with a darning plate. The idea of that, it sits over here to disengage those feed dogs. This machine doesn't need that, however, because the feed dogs do drop, which I'll show you in a moment. So to pop this foot on the machine, you just unscrew, I'll just get a screwdriver, unscrew the ankle, take that out completely. And then these two little bars here, just hook around and then you screw the screw back in, pop that on, and I'm just gonna tighten it with the screwdriver. And that's it. So I can see the needle isn't in the right position, and that's because I've got stitch C selected, which is a zigzag. So I wanna go to a standard straight stitch in the center position. So I'm just gonna move that around to A and then that's where we need it to be. Stitch length when you're doing free machine is always at zero because you're determining the length of the stitch. I've threaded the top and bottom of the machine and drawn my bobbin thread up. Now to disengage the feed dogs is down in the bobbin area. It's just this lever here and you just put it down and to the right and you can see that those teeth have just disengaged. So we're all ready to go and start free motioning. When doing free motion work, you always need to stabilize the fabric. So some people like to use a stabilizer like this one. Some people like to use a hoop. So I will show you both options. We'll drop the presser foot. And then this little cog on this foot is where you can change the height that the sole finishes. So I can feel that that's gonna be too tight when I'm moving my fabric. So I'm just gonna spin it to lift it. 
ever so slightly and now I can do that as freely as I like. So as you can see, I'm not the best at free motion. However, <laughs> the machine capabilities are far better than mine. And it's sewn through it really nicely in there. And then the results on the back, um, that's just my bobbin thread that I didn't cut off. I'll pull that through. And it's a nice neat stitch on the back. Using a hoop to stabilize the fabric. With the presser foot, you've got a slight extra lift. So you can lift that up to get the hoop in underneath. So that's in the hoop. My results are slightly better. And that's the neatness on the reverse there. You may have heard there that actually for the speed that I was moving the fabric, I was probably sewing a bit too fast. So for me, a machine with speed control is better. So we'll move on to the HD9 because that does have that function. And we'll see if I can, I can get them neater. In second place is the HD9. This is part of Janome's heavy duty range. If you wanna see that side of the machine, then check out our videos for best machine for heavy duty and best machines for leather. We're gonna focus on free machine embroidery. It's quite a fast machine, but fear not, you have the ability to adjust your speed with the speed control slider. This machine is straight stitch only, so if you're used to doing your thread painting, it doesn't do a zigzag, so it's not the machine for you. However, wait until you see what comes in first place. It's a nice big machine. You've got nine inches of space to the right of the needle, and it's got a full metal chassis. So actually it's quite shiny, so it's easier to um, move the fabric when you're free machining. It has a built-in needle threader, and it's a bottom loading bobbin, but it loads in the side rather than from the front. And let me just show you the bobbin a minute because it's 40% bigger than a standard bobbin, so it runs out less often. The machine comes with a couple of different feet. You have your straight stitch foot and a rolled hem foot. As you can see, these are a whole sole and ankle, and that's down to the speed of the machine. It's just more durable when you're going at that high speed. There's also an adjustable seam guide that screws onto the needle plate, and then you can adjust it to your seam, and a range of accessories. For free machine embroidery, you will need to get yourself one of these, which is an optional extra. It's a convertible free motion foot, and I'll show you how that fits on the machine and how it all works. The same type of foot um, is used on this machine, so the convertible free motion. This one comes with the closed toe and the open toe sole. Now with this machine, you don't drop the feed dogs. This free motion pack comes with a darning plate that we put on here. So I'll show you how to do that. What you wanna do first is take this foot off. So pop that one off. Then you want to remove the needle so you don't stab your fingers. Take these two screws on the needle plate out. Keep them somewhere safe, you don't want to be losing them. Okay, so I'll pop the bobbin cover off and then that plate can come off, keep that safe pop this one on and as you'll see this plate is thicker so the teeth won't touch the fabric pop the needle back in a final turn on there and then pop the free motion foot on it just clamps on there do the screw up that's nice and tight Pop the bobbin cover back on and we'll get it threaded and we'll be good to go. With the stabilised piece of work, 
I'm just going to drop that in there. I'll go on this side this time. And so I drop the presser foot down. That's a little bit tight for me, so I'm just going to loose, higher it up so it loosens and frees up the fabric a bit more. I will draw the bobbin thread up to the top. Let's grab that. And, and where we go. To do that many and I'll cut those loose ones off. What I should say is I set the speed around midway which I know is a good point for me is it limits the control on the foot pedal so I can put my foot flat to the floor and it's not going to go any faster than that setting. And there you go. You could probably hear the machine was at a much more consistent speed and that's because of the speed control. And then on the back, the results are nice and, and neat there. With the hoop to stabilize the fabric, again, you've got the extra presser foot lift. So I'll just lift that up to get it in. I'll go this side again, drop the presser foot down and then draw up the bobbin thread. I'll just cut off those loose ones, chop that off. Now, interestingly, I thought I was always better with a hoop than without, but judging by this, that's not the case. <laughs> but the machine handled it really well, and the back, again, is nice and neat on there. So let's move on to first place machine. In first place is the Bonina 335. This one's a computerized machine. It's got lots of different stitch options, around 200 from my memory, um, and that includes fonts as well. So although it's amazing on the free machine embroidery, it is also useful for lots of other different projects. Importantly, it has your straight stitch, and again, it has your zigzag if you thread paint that way. It has the ability to change the stitch width and the stitch length. You've also got multiple needle positions um, on there. Again, not really relevant for the free machining, however, really useful for lots of other projects. It has a built-in needle threader and the bobbin is a front-loading bobbin. You can drop the feed dogs on this one. It's a little button on the other end of the machine that I can't reach, but I'll show you that when we do some sewing on it in a moment. The machine comes with a range of accessories and feet. For free motion work, Benina have quite a few different options of feet, but in my opinion, the best ones are foot number 26. Now the needle opening on this one actually has a teardrop shape. And what that does is it, it improves the thread guide of the thread coming back up out of the machine. So it reduces thread piercing and thread looping. Um, it also helps to keep the fabric stable under the foot. So reduces um, thread breakage, even when you're going quite fast. The other one is foot number 24. This one is an open toe version and it's wider. So again, if you wanted to use your zigzag stitch to do your thread painting, then it's that foot that you'd need to use. It also comes with an extension table, so I'll get that popped on and we'll plug it in and I'll show you how it performs. I've chosen to use foot 26 um, with the Benina because I'm not going to be doing any zigzag. And to pop that foot on, I'll just raise that presser foot a minute, there's a little lever that just pops that cone off. And then you just lift that up and that goes in there. How easy was that? To disengage the feed dogs, there is a button on the side of the machine that you just simply press and the teeth have gone down. I've threaded the machine both top and bottom. I've got the extension table, which I'm just gonna pop on now. 
just slides, move that further away, slides on and then clips onto the two pins that are in the end. Now what Benina have thought about is when you need to change your bobbin, so there is a clear window here so you can see what you need to do in under there. I'm just going to draw the bobbin thread up. Let's just pull that through. I'm going to pop my stitch length down to zero. This machine comes with a foot pedal, but it does also have the start stop button. Therefore, again, it has your speed control. Personally, when doing free motion, I like to use the foot pedal because your hands are busy. So that's the way I'm going to go. With the stabilized fabric first, so I'm going to drop the presser foot. Now this presser foot is designed to hop as you're sewing. I'll draw the bobbin thread up a minute. start. So I was just securing them there. Again, I'll cut these loose ones off. felt so nice. Cut these off and then there you can see it's a nice neat stitch. I've been a bit more consistent because you get a bit more control and again the back is, is as neat as the front. This machine doesn't have the extra high presser foot lift however it doesn't need to because it sits that foot quite high before you start. So we'll drop that down and then I'll draw up the bobbin thread. Few. And I'll get those cut off so they don't get in the way. I must admit, I felt like I was in full control that time with the hoop as a safety net and just the machine in general. Again, it's nice and neat on there and the back will be exactly the same. To recap, all three machines have the ability to disengage the feed dogs and they all have a bottom loading bobbin. The second place machine, the HD9, this is a straight stitch only machine. So as I've said, if you thread paint with a zigzag, not going to happen on this one sadly unless you do it with a straight stitch. This machine comes with the table that is sat with. This one has quite a lot of space already however there is an extension table available that sits on the end there should you wish to purchase one separately. All three of them have turned really really nice results. I mean please forgive my free motioning skills because they're not the best but that's not a reflection on the machines. So aside from all those things the reason this one came in in first place is that it's really easy to set up for free machine embroidery and having just used it I felt the most in control. I guess that's just a reflection on the quality that Bonina machines are and for me as I say I'm not that great with free motion but it makes my results look so much nicer so I'm going to plug this back in and finish these off before I have to go back down to reality. Thanks for watching I hope it's been useful and I'll see you again soon.